Hi, this is the next series of Naming Alkanes after we've learned about naming the straight chain or unbranched alkanes. Here we go to naming the branch alkanes. So how do we distinguish branch from the straight chain? For the straight chain, you don't see any substituents or branches going out from the continuous chain of your hydrocarbons for branch alkanes the figure here will show you how branching occurs and i'm sure i'm pretty sure that you know how branches look like in some structures so for this video we're gonna learn a series of steps on how we're gonna name this branch alkanes we're gonna start with simple examples and there will be series after this that you need to learn on how to name much more complicated branch alkanes. So for now, let me start with this. The main idea of naming your branch alkane is to find the longest continuous carbon chain. It's longest continuous carbon chain. Not necessarily straight, but longest continuous carbon chain. Now, it's the same idea with the unbranched. Look for the alkanes that will give you the longest continuous carbon chain regardless if there are branches that's the first thing that's the main idea of your branch alkanes so say for example these examples here these highlighted pink hydrocarbons is your longest continuous carbon chain for this figure and this one in black becomes your branch or the other name for branch is a substituent and in the next figure here you see that you cannot make the continuous chain if you go all the way to this part because you can still move down and still get six if you just stop here you're gonna get four it's not the longest however it's continuous but it should be longest and continuous so longest continuous will appear to be this going down all the way up to the end so longest continuous becomes the six carbon not the straight so don't don't think about the straight chain but think about the longest continuous carbon chain okay now the specific steps you need to follow are the following i'm highlighting or underlining the series of steps so we'll remember it when we tend to discuss an example later on the first one is the the main idea get the parent chain and what did we say about the parent chain the longest continuous carbon chain that's your alkene that's the basis for your parent alkene that's why it's called parent chain so parent get the parent and second is Take note of what your branches are. Again, branches are also named as substituents. And how do you name them? You name them as alkyl groups. Now, what are alkyl groups? I think that was mentioned before when we did the functional groups. Alkyl groups are named the same way as we name your straight chain alkane. Your straight chain alkane was dependent on the number of carbon atoms so we were going we are going to borrow the prefixes that you memorize from one to ten so meth for one f for two three prop four but five pent so all those things until deck until ten but it will end in yl so meth becomes methyl if it's one carbon, S for two carbons will become methyl and then propyl, butyl, pentyl, and so on and so forth. So that's how you name the branch. Again, take note that you name the branch adopting or borrowing the prefixes we learned from the straight chain alkanes. So I hope by now you're clear about what these prefixes are and you've memorized them. And then right after the parent and the branches is we're going to number. We number the carbon atoms in the parent chain. How do we number? We number that starting with the end that will give us the lower number for the first branch. It's the principle of lower number. So where the branch is most near to that carbon, you number there. 
if for example the branches there are many branches and the branches are the same distance from every tip that means we lower it from according to the name of the branch the name of the branch the first letter of the name alphabetically we um, refer to the one that is first in the alphabet so between for example methyl and ethyl e comes first before m so you number from e starting with the one where e is and then all the way there so again principle of lower number you number from where the branch is closest to or if it's the same distance for many branches you look at the names of the alkyl and follow the alphabet and four assign numbers to the alkyl branches to show where they are in the parent chain the numbers are part of the name so we Take note where the branch is located, what carbon number before the name of the alkyl. And five, if the alkyl group appears to be more than once, we use prefixes, which are familiar of. Prefixes starting with two, no need for one, so two for di, tri for three, tetra for four, penta for five, and so on and so forth. If the alkyl group will appear more than once, each alkyl group, remember, must have a number the name will be incomplete if it doesn't have a number. And lastly, for the final naming, the name is written as one word with the parent name last. The parent is named last. The branches come first. And the names and the locants for the alkyl branches are put in alphabetical order, ignoring the prefixes. Prefixes is the di, tri, tetra, penta, don't include the prefixes but the main name of the alkyl and you separate the numbers with commas and the letters from the numbers with the dash or the hyphen okay and there will be no space after the name of the branch to the name of the parent chain so now it's time to concretize what i just discussed for the rules so remember the rule we get the parent we get the branch, we number, we name the branch where the numbers are. We use prefixes if needed, and then we name them all together. Let's now start with this example. This skeletal structure is given here. So first thing is we need to know what is our parent here. The parent is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. So we can count one, two, three, four. We can go five here. And we can go five here. That's the same. It's the longest continuous. If we count from one, two, three, here, four, we stop there. That's not the longest because we can still go all the way to five. So that means our parent chain is this highlighted green thing here, which is it's the same manner if you go all the way to down. This is the same way as five. That will still be a branch or this will be a branch, which is the same thing. So the green is your parent chain so that has five so this is a type of a pentane so pentane is the name of your parent second step the branch so we've located the branches and if you know how to interpret a skeletal structure the branch here indicates one carbon only one carbon one carbon so that means one carbon uses meth correct meth so that is a type of methyl that's the name of the alkyl branch methyl but there are two of that so take note there are two branches each is a methyl it's the same so methyl that's the name of your branch because it's an alkyl group third is we number how do we number so again we number from where the nearest branch is located we said that this is our nearest branch compared to this so the nearest carbon to it is this in the parent chain so we only number the parent chain so we number we have two options of numbering the parent chain we can number it from the left or from the right so we number it from the right because it's closest to this so one two three four five and then after numbering we now name it so we name it where the branches are the branches are in two and three carbons so that's two three and there are two methyls dash dimethyl and the name of the parent pentane so i will leave here please copy this in your notebook and stay tuned for the next part of this example
Bye for now.